3, 2, 1. Ага. Нет. Поехали. Хай, Ола. Хай, хай, Людмила. Ола, ты профессор в Норвегийской школе экономики и специалистом в Норджес Банк, right? Mm-hmm. And can you please tell a couple of words? How come you are an advisor at the bank and what are your duties, responsibilities there? And mm-hmm. what issues are you involved in? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I'm uh, doing research on uh, central banking, monetary policy, financial crisis. And uh, I'm doing also macro series. Uh, long series, time series. So I was asked by the central bank to be a special advisor for them back in 2000. Uh, and I've been almost ever since with a, with a short break because it's, it's uh, in a way my field of research. And do you have a contract with the bank? The contract is always for a period of time, usually five years, three years. And uh, I can tell you a secret from January the contract is out, so I don't know if it will be prolonged, but we will see. Uh-huh, <laughs> okay. And uh, you are the full-time professor in the Norwegian school? Yeah, mm-hmm. I am. Uh, we are currently meeting in Norway in Tromsø, mm-hmm. a city on two islands north of the Arctic Circle. Mm-hmm. Uh, from here, Roald Amundsen went on his last expedition. Did you know this? Yeah, I know that. Uh, so yeah, yeah. what does the purpose of your visit to Tromsø this time? Oh, I came here for two reasons. One reason is that I was asked by um, uh, fish boat uh, owners to come to a conference because uh, there are some big polit- policy issues at the moment uh, engaged with the fishing industry. So I was asked mm-hmm. to come and give a lecture. So I'm here because of that. And I'm also here because of meeting you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, is this your first time uh, provide the lecture for fisher? Oh, I've done that many times, uh, lecturing for, uh, for the fishing industry because it's, it has been part of my research uh, the last years. And what exactly are you talking <laughs> about there? Oh, uh, fisheries have to be regulated quite heavily because it's a, a resource which is um, limited. And uh, so it always has to be regulated how much you can fish every year and how it should be organized. And this has a lot of economic implications. Mm-hmm. And there is now a new set of laws uh, coming up in Norway which uh, might make it uh, more difficult for, for fish, uh, fishing boat owners, fishers, to, to survive. So they are a bit angry at the moment because uh, in the proposal from the government, taxes for them will increase quite dramatically. And, um, taxes or license for fishing? No, taxes. And they're doing that by different uh, uh-huh. treats so with uh, uh, licenses. So taxes and licenses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So, uh, and it's very complicated and we do believe that the government really didn't know what they were proposing because it's, in my opinion, not a very good idea what they're doing. Mm. And how big are the ships? Uh, fishing boats are very different sizes. The biggest one? And the biggest one. Uh, we have d- some of the biggest fishing vessels in the world belong to Norway. But they are not very big because fishing boats are not very big, but mm-hmm. they, ca- they can be like um, up to 80, 90 meters, the, the biggest ones. Most of them are, are, are shorter than 50, 60. And do you know the average salary for fishermen? Oh, fishermen uh, have very high salaries in Norway. Um, if I should tell you in euros, I think it will be around sixty, seventy thousand euros per a year. year. Per year, so they are they are, they, they earn very well. Interesting. Why you decided to become a researcher? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, really, um, I wanted to study history when I was young, mm-hmm. uh, but my two sisters told me, no, 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 you should stu- study economics. And I did. So the I stu- oldest sisters? 
Yeah. One is older, one is younger, oh. but you know, sisters decide for their yes, brothers. Okay. <laughs> 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 like, uh, I do. Like wives decide for their uh, husbands. For yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they told me you should go there and study at the Norwegian School of Economics. I did. I studied economics. Uh, I think it was, I thought it was extremely boring. I didn't find any interest uh -huh. in it. But when I came to macroeconomics, and particularly macroeconomic history, I found it extremely interesting. And statistics, uh, I really loved statistics. So, um, and then I found, uh, when I was doing my master thesis, I found some old statistics from the interval period between the First and Second World War, unemployment statistics, and I, I noticed that these statistics must have been very wrong, very wrong. So I went into some data and found out that, okay, these numbers are not correct. And then I just decided, okay, I will write a PhD uh, on this. And then I became a researcher. And how long did it take to write your PhD? How many oh. years? I started to write my PhD when I still did my master's. In fact, I al almost finished it before I did my master's. So I think I used four years, but uh, as a PhD student, I only used one and a half, perhaps. Two. It's first? Mm. Yeah. And your uh, postdoc, or how do you call this? In oh, yeah. Way? Yeah. I, after I was um, got my PhD, I, I very soon got a job as assistant uh, professor, mm -hmm. and then af associate professor, and then professor. When I was became a professor, we also needed to have what we call what we call a doctorate, doctor mm -hmm. which I think you have still this that system. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I had to do that in order to be a full professor. Do you remember the title of your first article? No. <laughs> uh, what was the reason for and the motivation for writing the article? That was that I found this old statistics, which I found unemployment statistics, which I understood must have been wrong uh, because there was no persistence in the time series. So I understood this is wrong, so I just want to make this right. Okay. But when I did uh, my research, I noticed, I, I understood that I can't make it right, but I can make it better. What are the requirements for scientific publications in your country, Norway? Is there a mm. list of accredited journals or yeah. Uh, should they be indexed in some databases? Mm. Yeah, I think it's very similar to what you have in your country. Um, we have uh, this tire system that we have um, uh, a body <coughs> which um, give uh, credits to different journals and you at three different levels. Mm -hmm. One is zero, which is the lowest level. Then we have one, which is the is medium this level. NSD? Yeah, ah. and two is the highest level. Mm -hmm. So it's research, if it's on a list, it could be several level, it's still research. So the universities uh, are oriented oriente only to this NSD list? Mostly, they are, but they also have their own lists. Because the NSD list is, is a bit uh, influenced by its Norwegian or Nordic. So the uni universities have their own lists, which are more in often more international. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, definitely. If if you if you if you publish in at level two, the highest level, you get a bonus, mm -hmm. which is quite high. Level one, you get a bonus. Is it a secret? How big is the bonus? Uh, no, it's not a secret. But it's uh, around one th uh, two thousand euros for level two. For level two. Yeah. And, and for level one, it's around five hundred euros. How many? Papers supposed to publish a researcher in the university? Do they per year? Yes. Yeah, it depends on which university it is. But my university expect you to publish at least one at level one a year. Uh, but the average is higher, so I think the average is around one and a half mm -hmm. per year. 
And does the university accreditation depends of the researchers' uh, publications? Yeah, very much, uh, very much so, and also teaching, teaching skills. Uh, that but is but why uh, universities motiv uh, motivate the researchers on bonuses to publish. Yeah, yeah. That's why. That's why. This is what they should do in Ukraine. They don't do. They don't. They don't hmm. give bonuses. Mm. And uh, who uh, is the funding this? Uh, the university oh or the government? Yeah, that's a good question. The government funds the universities. For this? Yeah, and then the universities funds the researchers. Mm -hmm. But it could be a bit different mm -hmm. depending on where the universities want you to publish. We have this top 10 or top 20 lists of economic journals mm -hmm. where we get a very, very high bonus. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that's that's more up to the, the university itself to decide. And how many researchers of Norway publish in these top-level journals? Uh, hundreds, uh, and at my university, it's, it's um, a lot. Uh, I think we are among the the best in in Scandinavia in publishing mm -hmm. in in these Great. very high-ranked journals. Great, and. Uh, uh, should the head of the university in Norway or head of the department have a PhD and uh, do an academic work? Yeah. If you want to be a head of department, now you need to have a PhD and you, have, you need to be involved in academic work. Uh, you should be a very active researcher be before you get to this stage. And you should still do research when you, you are head of department. How is it possible? The, uh, we have uh, more than very many other nations. We have uh, a lot of administrative staff helping mm -hmm. them. For paperwork. Yeah, yeah. So we have a manager, a manager at every department mm -hmm. and a staff of administrative. What is the average student's age in Norway? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> But um, usually, I think s average age of starting your studies is around 20. Uh, after mm. school? Yeah, after you finish when you're 18. Mm -hmm. And then? But a lot go to military, both girls oh. and boys, or work. So perhaps it's 21. And or why they go into the military? They have to. And girls too? Yeah, girls is more volunteer. Uh -huh. But but um, there is a national service still in Norway. Yeah, you have to. So uh, uh, are they get paid for this? No. No, they they get allowances, but uh, no salary. But they get free lodging, free housing, and, and yeah, uh -huh. and food, and, and then do, uh, they do pay. Do they have vacations? Uh, they have vacations, but not very much. Uh -huh. I I did it myself. So it's <laughs> tough. Education is. In the state universities, it's basically free. Mm -hmm. You have to, you have to pay for a fee, but it's it's very low. For all, or mm. only for? Uh, for all. If you're a foreign student and you're admitted to un Norwegian university, state university, you don't pay a fee. It's Just not a small. Fair. No, but it's like that. Private universities, you you pay a fee, mm -hmm. but still, very subsidized by the state. So it's you don't pay as much as you do, for example, in the United Kingdom or US or Canada. And how big? Depen depends on which university it is, but it can vary from uh, 5,000 euros to, year. yeah, yeah. Yeah, to perhaps 10,000 euros. Only for education? That's only for your edu so education. Uh, yeah. this uh, accommodation, yeah. expenses, it's ex yeah, extra. Yeah. And accommodation is very expensive. You have mm -hmm. to consider 5,000 euros per month. 500 euros per month. Or should live mm. with parents at the same city. Yeah, yeah. Do Norwegian students live with their parents for a long time? Those who are from the big cities where mm -hmm. the universities are stay with their parents very often, not necessarily, but often. Mm -hmm. Very often what happens is that the parents make them a flat <laughs> for them. Thank you. Thank you for the conversation. Thank you. Nice talking to you. Bye-bye. Nice talking bye -bye. to you too. <laughs>